Today's post in the Dullum's Cave Music is Psalm 8, and after uh, five preceding psalms about how a man who's blessed by God and yet under uh, tremendous pressure, life-threatening crises, uh, he's blessed by God because he's meditating on God's word. He's drawing from those streams of water, even when he's facing uh, these crises. And uh, when we get to the eighth psalm, uh, the uh, songbook then returns to the great theme of Psalm 2, the king who has been appointed by Yahweh to reign from the heavenly Zion. And just as Moses stood up on Pisgah and was able to look over uh, the promised land, so uh, Psalms 1 and 2 at the beginning of the, of the Psalter help us to rise up, look over the whole Psalter and see the themes that it's going to deal with. And then we go down into David's experiences of conflict and trusting, and taking refuge in Yahweh, drawing from those streams of water. And then we come to Psalm 8, which is like another mountain peak, uh, again, surveying the bigger picture again. And so it's Psalm 1 and 2, down into the conflicts of the reality of life under the sun and then up to this tremendous peak in Psalm 8. And it's a, I think it's an amazing psalm, an amazing song that David would compose a hundred years, or sorry, a thousand years before the Son of God became incarnate as man. The Son, the second person of the Trinity, the triune God who revealed himself in the Old Testament as Yahweh, uh, in his covenant name, uh, the Son as the second person of the Trinity, although he was glorified in heaven as the eternal Son, co-equal with the Father and the Spirit, became incredibly weak and vulnerable when he was conceived in Mary and then born as a baby. But he was born as a child, this weak uh, child, uh, to fulfill Yahweh's promise to Adam and Eve that a son of their own a human man would crush the enemy's head. Satan, who had uh, uh, rebelled, had been cast out of heaven, and who wanted to avenge his humiliation by uh, attacking man and destroying his place in creation, uh, the, as it were, what's called here the avenger, would be crushed by the child that came from Adam and Eve. And that's what the first two verses of David's song are saying in the psalm. The triune God's covenant name, Yahweh, is magnificent throughout all the earth, not just in heaven, but on earth. Not through a display of overwhelming power, but a display of human weakness, like that of what we see when we see a baby or babies, infants, in their weakness and vulnerability. This was how the strength of Yahweh would be manifested to destroy Satan and his works. And of course, the Apostle John says the reason the Son of God appeared, was conceived, was born in human nature as a baby, was to destroy the works of the devil who was bent on avenging his own humiliation. And so David proceeds in the psalm to describe how God had given such a privileged place to man and woman in his creation. David's looking right back from this peak, looking right back to Genesis and the first couple of chapters. But the dominion God gave them over the earth was corrupted when they fell under the, uh, the rule of Satan. But when the writer to the Hebrews, in the letter to the Hebrews, became a believer in Christ, he'd been a Jew and had come to faith in Christ, and he would have known Psalm 8 from childhood and would have sung it, memorized it. Through the inspiration of the Spirit, beholding the glory of Christ, he saw this psalm was looking at forward from David's day to the one who would indeed, as a man, regain dominion over all of creation. Jesus Christ, the baby born in weakness in Bethlehem, and born of a woman. And so the one who in Psalm 2 says is Yahweh, who, the one who Psalm 2 says is Yahweh's appointed king in Zion, the one who's going to rule the nations and in whom we take refuge is the same one being spoken of in this psalm. Uh, the writer of the Hebrews says, we don't see everything under man's dominion now, but we see Jesus and everything is under his dominion. He is the one who said when he was raised from the dead, all authority in heaven and earth is mine now. 
people and nations are still struggling uh, to take dominion over creation. And I suppose the COVID virus issue is a contemporary example of man's struggle to try and have dominion in creation. Or the display just today in North Korea of their military nuclear might an attempt, a struggle to seek to have dominion. But this song is made for these days. It is about top-down reasoning and top-down praise. We see in the midst of everything going on, a man struggles to get control of the earth. Maybe even climate change could be thrown into that as well. We see Jesus in the midst of this. Those of us that are in covenant with Yahweh look up and we see the man now crowned with glory and honor uh, in the heavenly Zion, ruling over all things. He is the firstborn among many brothers. And one day we will inherit the earth with him in our resurrection bodies and we will have dominion over creation through, in and through Christ Jesus. And so here's top-down thinking, here's top-down praise uh, in any age when we look at man so far short, uh, falling so far short of what God intended him to be, struggling to try and be what God wanted him to be and miserably failing. And Calvin says this, it is our duty to rise higher than David does in this psalm and contemplate the invaluable treasures of the kingdom of heaven, which God has unfolded in Christ. By reflecting on these, our hearts will be inflamed with love to God so that we may not allow ourselves to become lazy and forgetful in celebrating his praises. In other words, so that we are saying, Yahweh, our Lord, how awesome is your name today in all of the earth. Yahweh, our Lord, how awesome is your name throughout the earth. Above the heavens you reveal your majesty and worth. From nursing babies and from infant lips you strength reveal. To neutralize the avenging plans of foes and enemies. When I look at the hems, the work your fingers formed in me, and see the moon and shining stars that you have set in place. I think what is man that you should concern yourself with him. What is it about people that you show such care to them? You made him little lower than Crowned him with majesty, what honor you have given him. You made him ruler over the creation of your hands. And underneath his feet to place all things was your great plan. Like sheep and cattle, man has tamed for use. And even creatures in the wild, you've given man to rule. Birds in the sky, the fish and teeming life, the sea brings forth. Yahweh, our Lord, how awesome! 